Hello everyone, this is Harley from Garden NFL and welcome to episode 11 of the Tropical Fruit Gardening TV series. In today's episode, we are going to be catching up on a lot of work that we have to do in our garden here in Bradenton, Florida. Now we've been doing a lot of work at the farm recently in Punta Gorda, but we're going to transition and try to do some work here because we have a lot of uh, you know stuff to catch up on. Here we have an alama tree and this alama is actually flowering guys. I'm going to show you that because this is so cool. Here's the red alama flower. Compared to other Nonas, this flower is really cool because it's just all red. And as you can tell, the new growth right up top, the, even the new growth has like a, a reddish kind of tint to it. So the flower itself is just very large and uh, deep. It's a deep red color. Um, unfortunately, I don't have another llama flower growing just yet on this tree to pollinate it because the llamas only accept them. A llama pollen so this is a tree it stands about 10 feet plus uh, right now and I haven't trimmed it and I'm actually standing on a ladder as you guys can see and you're not supposed to trim the llama because it's supposed to just you know be allowed to grow as tall as it can get I mean actually chickens are known to roost on the branches once it gets to a, a, a sufficient height and actually the chicken manure is a great fertilizer for the llama so that's actually a pretty interesting fact I've, I read online. But as you see, the flower is just really beautiful. It's the first red alama flower I've seen in person. So I'm really happy to see uh, you know, such a beautiful flower on my nona. So right here is a Lisa Actimodia flower. And as you can tell, this is in its, um, when it's in the male stage. So what we're gonna do is collect the pollen from there and then we're gonna pollinate a another item over there which is a uh, priestly variety so we're gonna do that and i'm show you how we're gonna do it so right here we have our lisa at the moja flower and we're just gonna take this canister and we're just gonna simply tap the pollen out of it wow really good amount of pollen so as you can see can you, it's kind of hard to see because there's a uh, it's a cloudy day, but you see those little tiny specks in there are pollen. And we're just gonna take our, our paintbrush and we're gonna collect it and go over there. So I'm gonna show you the flower we're gonna actually pollinate. So the flower is actually just right around the corner, right over here. And it looks really like condensed because there's just all sorts of things growing in here right now. So here is the priestly at the Modia flower and it's ready to be pollinated because the inside, it's, this is a female stage flower because you could tell it's barely open. Unlike the male that we saw that was uh, tight. This is the priestly at the Modia variety. Down there it says priestly at the Modia. And I got this for $10 at the flea market at um, one of the flea markets here before it closed the wagon wheel. It was notorious for having just a lot of uh, nonas and really cool tropical exotic plants and for cheap, you get them for cheap. And I got this one from like a Vietnamese seller. They're all crazy nonas or lineas. Oh, I love this shop. I miss this shop because, you know, that's where, that's that was my nursery. That's where I got a lot of these trees from but it's okay. Oh, look at this guy. This is a lizard. We have these all over in Florida. If you guys ever come to Florida, or if you're from Florida, you would know that these lizards are everywhere. I believe they're actually called like a gnolls, but I, we call them, Floridians call them lizards. We don't call them animals. So, beautiful lizards. Lizards are all over here. And this lizard is actually chilling, as you see on the Lisa at the Mundia. And also, guys, we didn't even pollinate it, but like, let me just show you my little fruit farm and like the fruit that I just have over here. Okay, really quick. These are just so much sugar apples. And this is where I wake up every morning. So you just see, I wake up and then I just come here. This is what I see. I say, wow, this beautiful view I have. You 
see all the butterflies flying everywhere. And then boom, you get the sugar apple. But let me show you this. This is actually my Relinia. And oh my God, guys, look, you can tell the Relinia has flowers. These are baby Relinia flowers. And I can't wait because this is a certain type of Relinia. It has like a little tiny Relinia. It's not like the big Relinia that you're used to seeing. It's more of a bushy Relinia. So we're gonna see how the flowers and the fruits, because it loves this spot right here, just under this, um, I don't even know what that one is. I believe that one's uh, Birds of Paradise, that flower, or the palm. There it is. And right here I have another Lisa at the Monia, but I think it has uh, some root problems because it's not, it's having trouble pushing out. But as you see all the, the flowers that it's pushing. This is where I have another Lisa at the Moya. This is where we just took the pollen from. As you see, that's where we took the pollen from. And uh, this papaya up here is really big too. That one's gonna have probably like 20 papayas. But right under it, there's another papaya. This is a dwarf malaysian papaya and look at this papaya so big and the bloom is just never ending too with this one Did you see all the flowers it has oh it's really pretty and i like it because it stays dwarf so you can see uh, right here we have like a little bench you can sit uh, And you come along here, you know, this is just some chop and drop plants. I like this one I'm not sure of the name, but over here. I kind of have to organize this a little bit, but here we have about the mod, yes Beautiful these are the Lisa at the mod, yeah? As you see here, the, the tag, Lisa at the Moja. And these fruits are probably like another month out from being ready. Look at that, guys. I do have a bit of a aphid problem with the ants, as you see. So I always have to constantly water them down. I'm gonna eventually put like white on the the base of this Lisa Tumonja, so to deter the ants. But as you see, this one is kind of loaded. The Lisa Tumonja. Look at that. Really good fruit set on that tree. This is a vegetable hummingbird. It's kind of been a really in, a, in an annoying spot. It's outground, as you see, it's kind of shading my Lisa now, so I have to do something about that, take it to the farm. And right around here, as you see, I've already pruned a lot of the sugar apples. The reason why I prune them is to get a second crop here in December. And this one's already budding out. I don't wanna mess up the bud. Here are the papayas too, as you see. These papayas are doing really well as well. And right next to them is this one. This is a female i believe but there's a male right here this is this is the male i believe this is a, a male right over here i have these are my anonas and ignabear ice cream beans I have a lot of cherimoya over there, sugar apple, atemoya. This is all atemoya though. And you can kind of tell the atemoya apart because it does grow a little like bigger and the leaves are much more like rounder and thicker, kind of like a cherimoya. So yeah guys, this is kind of a, my food garden. Hello, mommy. This is Lulu. She's the queen. Lulu. 
But she can be moody sometimes. <laughs> oh, or really nice. You moody, mommy. So this is ready to be picked now, as you see. It's a beautiful color. And we're gonna actually pick it and see how it how it is. As you see there's more that I've yet to uh, ripen up. It's a beautiful tree. I think everyone should have guava in their garden. Really productive in uh, Florida. And uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful tree to have. Very great tasting too. So let's just pick this. It's easy. Easy comes off like that. Oh wow, this is beautiful. It looked like a lemon almost. But it's not. Definitely not a lemon. Actually really nice. Wow, really beautiful pink color on the inside. And a lot of people sometimes they get larvae, but I don't see any signs of larvae in this guava. Yeah, bro, I can't wait to get one of those things and just like... Yeah, the size. I want to get one too. But I noticed that you gotta have that thing like so sharp. Same with these, bro. All right. You gotta have like so sharp to be able to just come in and like... Yeah. Over here too, I notice it gets like, I'm trying to make this the path though, you know? I kind of laid down these things. Yeah. But I need to, yeah, I need but to they're really... good when they're like a little bit higher this size to just chop it like throw around. Yeah, this is good. But the this Mexican sunflower, once I chop it, I think I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it to the farm. I don't know if, I, I, I wanted to leave it here, you know, but. But the same bro, you can literally cut right here. Yeah, and, just and then you have new groves. Uh -huh. If you want to do higher, the same thing as the moringa to grow after your head. Right. You can cut it right here. They will grow new. You can get like four or five pieces from this. Uh huh. They grow easy. There's so much ants up there too. I, I always notice. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. There's so much ants. Uh huh. Because then I can. Yeah, so do you see like the ants there on top? It's because of this like green. Oh, so is that like aphids? Yeah, so it's better to just like chop it out and let it grow again. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I thought it was because like with the sap, you know, it was growing too fast. Because yeah. I know some, some things really sap as they grow. It's better than to like keep it four feet and then just let it bush from the top of this. Right. I like this one, yeah. I'm gonna. Somebody's this. Post a video about that. I think it was mad from what's ripening. Uh huh. Oh, he did. I think so too. Yeah. He, he said like video he, on that. they don't let them get like too high. Yeah. Uh, this does. We just cut this moringa today. So we're gonna see how it grows. Do you have anything to sharpen this? Okay, here we are sharpening the machete. Oh, did you plant that there? <laughs> this, yeah. is a, this is a moringa he planted there. And I think it will grow. We planted uh, some moringos over here. Right here we planted one. And it's important to keep the pot wet or the soil wet. So just remember to keep it wet and it should sprout. And then we're putting this other one. 
And actually there's another Moringa back here. Right here. So that one, that one should go there. Yeah, the air potato vine is just, I don't know if it's invasive or it's native. I believe it's native because it just takes over everything. Yeah, it's so annoying. And you can smell the stink bugs, I smell stink bugs. So I think like they, I think they eat the potato vine, I'm not sure. Yeah, they love but I actually was, when I was trimming the, cause over here there's passion fruit. Right here there's passion fruit. So it's coming, it's coming along this way. So I need to clear like all this, this junk. Not junk, but just the weeds that have grown. And as you see, it's grown all over here too in the, this is Mexican, oh no, this is chaya. Tree spinach. And this is just that weed. These potato vines are good if you want to like create some shade though. Oh yeah, dude, they work great. If you check back there, it's all shades because of this, yeah. the potato vine. But I just rather have something like, you know, like passion fruit. This, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a caster bean that's doing. Yeah. The Hart Brothers, you want me to go see? Yeah, I started growing caster beans. Yeah, it goes fast too. It's so good for uh, this drop and drop to use for yeah voice like retention. Yeah, it's good. I like oh, careful there's holes, but this coconut palm I can't wait till it has coconut. This Did you one. bring that from them too? No, this one I brought from the yeah, flea market. Look that that one I got from the flea market. Look at that leaf, right? Yeah, it's about to come out. So And this is the star shop, but this one, I don't know, has new growth. But I can't wait. I, you know, the passion fruit went over to my neighbor's side, but my neighbors are cool. I think they won't, they won't mind. They're not gonna touch this. The potato. Yeah, they, it's they're competing. <laughs> yeah. Is big. Yeah, th I think it's big because it doesn't have the fruit yet. Yeah. So the leaf is just humongous. Look at this huge leaf. But it's taken over. So. And this is a rubber tree that's attached on. Yeah. Nice rubber tree, same one I have. It's very easy to get air layer from it. Yeah, yeah, I did an air layer back there actually. Yeah, it's very easy. And those grandmas love those things, so it's the grandmas. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's very tropical. Yeah. This baggy fruit is pretty thick already. You see where he's just removing the vine. This one goes crazy. Yeah, my neighbor doesn't do any gardening, so we're, we'll take care of it on our side. We'll help them make it look better. The air layer, the tree spinach. It's gonna be a little huge. <laughs> it's gonna be like a small tree from the floor. It is cool. It's good for pollinators. What's that? What's this one again? Oh, they're all really nice. I forgot which one this is called. Uh, noni, this is noni. It's a really healthy fruit. Then we're also gonna take 
peach. So here we have Urban Jungle Project, huge van. And inside, you can see how much space we're working with. See, this thing is huge. There's a peach tree. So we're gonna go to the farm with uh, the trees. So it's awesome because we wanna damage any trees like that happen when I take them. So yeah. I can't believe we just fit this huge um, custard apple in here. This is in like a 30 gallon. And we just lifted it and put it in there and fit. Yeah. Okay, it's a rubber tree. Yeah, because later on, man, whenever you're selling stuff, these are just extras, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is just to make the place look cute. Yeah. Look good. Sell and make money. Yeah, no, this... Like me too, you want to spread more fruits and stuff. Mm. Right, this is just for all, you know, personal use. Yeah. This is not for, for sale or anything. This is just to... But as you see, we have everything loaded. Custard apples, sugar apples, green guys, chai. Rubber tree, name it. So here we made it to the farm. So you see, we have and it's a little flooded right there. So it started raining now, but we got mostly everything in. You see, we have so much thing. This is a custard apple. Uh, this is a Namdak Mai mango, which I recently just tipped, but this is gonna go in the ground. And just a bunch of different things we're gonna put in the ground. Some more sugar apples. This is a star fruit tree. And as you guys can tell, it already has a star fruit. Alright, we're gonna eat some miracle berries and some fruits. So this is the miracle berry. And I saw a few over here. These are really ready. Once you eat your miracle berry, what the effects will do is it'll turn anything really tart to something really sweet. So something I like to eat with this are June plums. Because June plums are actually really, people think they're tart. They don't have a lot of sweetness and it's true. So when you eat the miracle berry, it turns much better. Hard to pick with one hand. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wash them. Wash them off. There you go. All right, let me know what you think. They're pretty good, right? Have you tasted them before when they're regular? No. Oh, you haven't? I like like that. I like this skin too. Yeah, they're really healthy. I think I like all these little hairs. 
Ja. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is really, um, this is a really good protein too when you eat green. Mm. Sugar apple and miracle berries is pretty good too. So we're at the farm and it's starting to rain. That was June plum, but just some sugar apples that we need to harvest. I eat this one. Mm. Mm. This one is ready to be harvested now. As you see, the nodes in between the white or the green are, are getting white and starting to pop up. So here we have the sugar apple. Ow. A red hand just bit me. There we go. Sugar apple from the farm. Mm -hmm. The sugar apple that we just picked. Here you go, each other. Is it right? I think it was for me. Maybe I could have another day, but. So good. Yeah, so good. Oh yeah. Oh, did some of those have the little root coming out? Maybe. Or maybe yeah. not. Oh yeah, that's good. Thank you. Sugar apple. I think the flavor is enhanced a little bit because of the miracle berry. Mm. 